Major Mohammad Shah also joining us on the broadcast. Uh, good morning, uh, Major Shah. Thank you for joining us on news. That's my very first question to you. When we speak about this ominous warning which President Zelensky has now given to the world, help us understand how it could shape the world opinion against Russian President Mr. Putin, considering uh, that the Western countries are anyway uh, against Mr. Putin, the world um, it has been warning of Vladimir Putin, asking him to really back off and considering, uh, you know, the Ukrainian president has now spoken of and reinvoked the memories of Chernobyl, the spine chilling memories. Help us understand how it could play out against Russia. Uh, sure. So before that, I'll just give you a slight uh uh, background about President Putin, who used to be a lieutenant colonel in the army and then he was a spy. And his wife also did not know what he was up to. I mean, his life partner, soulmate. So it's very difficult to actually assess the mind of a spy. So now what he, he has played very smartly. On the 21st February, when he declared the two Donbass areas, Luhan and Donbass, as independent states, why he did that? He did that basically so that they get the independence. Uh, let's talk about this nuclear uh, plant which Ukraine claims has been hit by Russia. Help us understand um, if at all, you know, um, if at all a nuclear power plant gets hit, uh, what can be the ramifications of the same? The fire for now fortunately has been controlled. But how big an instant it is and what it could mean for Ukraine and of course Europe. No, no, it is, uh, it, is a, it is a very serious thing when a nuclear plant is hit. It is not just the fire has been controlled, it is the aftermath thereafter. They are going to be solid, they are going to be very, very bad repercussions. Not only in terms of the, the anger, of, no, 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 in terms of uh, environmentally, in terms of, like I'll give you an example of Bhopal gas tragedy. People are still suffering from that. People in Japan, till today, even after decades, are suffering from what had happened in Japan. So the repercussions are very strong. For everyone around, I mean, I, it's not, I don't mean to uh, uh, to panic people there, but yes, it is. The reality is, it is very, very uh, serious. Now, the ramifications, if the U nuclear power plant, uh, as if Ukraine had surrendered its uh, nuclear powers to Russia way back when the disintegration happened after 1991. And that was under, I would say, under gross mistake with Ukraine did, because after that, had that not happened, then the ball game today would have been totally different. Ukraine would have been under nuclear power for that matter. And now, uh, you know, also all the MiG-21s, the ships, the aircrafts, were all which are all manufactured by, like for example, MiG-21. They're all manufactured by Russia. But where in Russia are they manufactured? They were manufactured in Ukraine. And Ukraine, that's right. And that's one of the India biggest issue. Absolutely, in... Major Shah. That's one of the biggest issue which India is also facing. Considering where we import a large amount of our arms and ammunition from Ukraine. A lot of, uh, from Russia, apologies. A lot of spare parts come from Ukraine. And for many, uh, you know, uh, of... Uh, the fight of jets, uh, arms, ammunition, etc. Um, a lot of manufacturing does happen uh, till date in Ukraine. But, you know, shifting our focus back and specifically talking about this nuclear power plant, which is on fire. And, you know, I, I speak about it again and again because this reminds us of the bone chilling memories. Very unfortunate instances, of course, like Chernobyl, like uh, Bhopal gas tragedy, which India had herself really bared. Help us understand, sir. As a defense expert, do you see at all any army hitting on nuclear power plants? That's unprecedented, if I am correct. No, no, it is. You are hundred percent right over there. It is unprecedented and it is very unprofessional. It is also against the Geneva Conventions, and uh, it is not done at all. It is just not done. But you know, uh, in as Leo Tolstoy once said, it is better to be is better to be peaceful than to be right. And he also said, all is fair in love and war. And though it is, uh, it is really wrong, it's extremely wrong, but Russia will cover it up by saying it was a collateral damage, they didn't mean to. They're too smart. And they're very smart. The, the way they have played up on uh, the two Donbass areas on 21st February, uh, most certainly, you know, it can certainly escalate and it can, it can have a lot of repercussions. Because so far, there were no signs. I was, I've been saying from the very beginning, there were no signs of a uh, world war. But when you actually involve such kind of a... When you go nuclear, when you involve other nations, then yes, a small stone, when you throw it into the pond, can lead to actually a tsunami. A lot of people do not know that. A small spark can lead to a huge forest fire. So when you say, uh, oh, will it lead to a world war or not, it's very easy to analyze whether it would or it would not. 
but if you use your common sense anybody for that matter it these kind of things are the ones which can be a threat to the entire world in fact and as president zelensky said that if the nuclear uh, if uh, it would been for the damage could have been an entire threat for the entire europe well he is not just uh, trying to be, uh, i think he, in a way if he also has a point because in a way yes it's you can perceive it in whichever way you want you can perceive it like a threat or you can perceive it as something very very practical something very pragmatic which he said that it can actually it's which is which is a fact actually it is like you know give a small example it's like someone coming to india and saying that uh, you should have voted in uh, in the un uh, because ukrainians are saying that because you and a lot of indian students are there in ukraine right now so it's a very subtle threat similarly this hmm. also so do you see it speaking, do it you see wrong, it as a it... subtle threat do you see it as a subtle threat uh, major oh, sir yes. because you're oh, an yes. expert in oh, you know the matter of defense uh, and help us understand uh, what it would mean really how it would be interpreted by the western world especially europe because uh, they are of course all, all these countries are neighboring ukraine where zelensky is claiming that a nuclear power plant has been hit Oh, most certainly, it is a subtle threat. There is no denying that. And so, a subtle threat. So there, you are covered. So if someone asks you, say, you know, no, but I didn't. I meant that. I had good intention. I meant something else. So most certainly, it is a subtle threat. And these are the things. You know, it has. Russia has to see. Russia will have to stop. Ultimately, because at the end of the day, this too shall pass, right? So it's a matter of time. Now, hmm. President Zelensky, who I also, I was initially of the fact that what is he doing? He's going to get people killed, and they're going to get blood baths. But now I am. beginning slowly and and steadily because seeing the tough fight that ukraine has actually put up to russia it was not expected it was a total, a total surprise yeah and that is the greatest thing in a war strategy strategy the element of surprise the element of surprise should not be lost for example when uh, cia and, and they had given the input to ukraine that america will strike them on 16 february and that is incidentally ironically that is the date that they they started withdrawing behind Russia. So nobody will actually tell the strategy, and if it, they, nobody would want to be predictable. They will yeah. strike it, and they will strike it hard when you expect. Actually, President Zelensky claims that it was the Russian forces which had hit the nuclear power plant. A fire had broken out. Fortunately, it is under control, but certainly. it has sent alarm bells ringing across the world no surprise there uk has called an emergency meeting uh, of the un on the same it is to help us understand really uh, what can we expect now going forward uk has called an emergency meeting uh, at the un of course um, you know this this fire at the nuclear power plant uh, is something which has uh, got the whole world worried help us understand what we can expect if this emergency session does take place in the un See, I'll be very honest with you. Uh, UN cannot do much. You yes. can have any meeting for two reasons. I will tell you, particularly these two reasons. First reason, when China was trying to show its aggression, they were they were misbehaving with India. UN could not do anything. When Russia, when China tried to uh, uh, misbehave with India, UN could not do anything. When any other nation, US, UN, I would call it uh, a perfect name, a toothless tiger. Yeah. It's a it's a, it's a huge body without any power. And now again. If you go again as per Article Seven, which I am quoting again of the UN, which says any country which wants independence, which wants any state, which wants its own sovereignty, is welcome to do so. It can be supported by the neighboring countries, and if if it wants to part ways yeah. with a certain country, for example, Pakistan wants to part ways with Pakistan, for example, and if Pakistan head of state writes a letter to India that he wants military help. to protect themselves to maintain peace again pakistan india is well within the right to launch an attack on pakistan which i which i am not saying which it will do or it will not do. i'm giving an example so please understand the analogy so similarly russia did mm. exactly that on 21st february when they declared two independent states a lot of people ask okay so big deal why did he even if he declared two independent states no the biggest the biggest strategy behind that was so that once you declare a head of state of these yeah. two states Write a letter to Russia, and Russia can send in troops, claiming it on paper to be only a military exercise and not a war. So technically speaking, they are covered by saying it's not a war that they have launched. They have played it very smart. They have, they have, they have strategically planned it. It's not that they have just gone in to attack or invade or to annex a country. No, they, it is they have covered themselves in a very very smart way. So because they are covered there, as per Article Seven, and also. 
even if they were not covered i will give you a situation where they were not covered even then un cannot do anything well, in this UN, at all well obviously un obviously un cannot do much it certainly as many say it's quote and quote a toothless body but un can condemn russian action and very well, obviously as we've seen in the past few days it's going to have no um, effect on mr putin's plans but um, major shah we have of course a reaction coming in ukraine's minister of energy has also spoken out he said and i quote we are on the verge of the largest man made disaster in human history major shah russia hitting a nuclear plant there is no doubt about it that um, it is huge it is scary to say the least but these statements coming from ukraine also are very well crafted isn't it considering you know when you have the president who says that this could be the annihilation of the world the energy minister says this is this is possibly the biggest or the largest man made disaster in human history which is in the waiting doesn't it increase pressure on putin to come back on the table to resume talks and to uh, you know immediately declare cease fire putin won't it's obvious he doesn't care but it does increase pressure on russia doesn't it it certainly does it certainly does but let me tell you russia is going to be undeterred by yeah. any of the pressure unfortunately and uh, they are incorrigible they would not be able they will not move you see the kind of pressure already they have from the international community you know in the un again i will we are talking about un i will tell you india abstained from voting china abstained from voting india had its own reasons india the firstly india the peace loving country you don't take side china had a very strategic reason behind it ua okay let's talk about ua ua did not vote i will tell you why ua did not vote I'll, by this everyone would be able to understand ua is friends with russia russia is friends with iran iran is friends with yemen the rebels there are a lot of rebels in yemen so now if i put in very simple words so that everyone can understand uae if they upset russia russia will get upset they will write a letter to or they will make a phone call to make it even simpler they will make a direct phone call to iran iran will make a phone call to the yemeni rebels who mm -hmm. will go to uae which is neighboring and they'll create havoc in uae so uae had those reasons so similarly yeah, and, and if you if you really see what uae has said of course uh, major shah uae has very clearly and openly uh supported russia they have even really uh you know gone out against the west 